Hello and welcome, my name is Daniel and in this video I want to show you my track rig for Cinema 4D which will render with Redshift Octane and Corona Render and of course also with default uh, materials for Cinema 4D. Okay, let's take a look at the 3D model here inside Cinema 4D. I have opened the Corona Renderer version of the track rig and let's take a look at the layer track rig locked and height and here are all the materials uh, for the track um, hatched and let's take a look inside a material you will see everything is um, nicely shaded with PBR workflow and with the new physical materials um, for Corona renderer and we have a metalness map albedo map, roughness, and of course also an, a normal map. So very easy to handle. And then we have a tab which is called, or a layer which is called lights. And here are all the emissive materials included for the light meshes of our truck. And you can handle the lights strengths just with the user data of the truck rigs. You simply choose your first null object which is called track rig and here we you will find the user data and as you can see here if I open the lights tab here you will find all the lights user data and you can adjust the strengths and I will show you that in a sec. So um, if you don't need the materials anymore and if you want to animate this rig you can simply um, disable the track rig locked and height and lights layer and also um, hide it and lock it. That's it. Okay. And now we want to take a look at the user data here. And as you can see, all the meshes except some small meshes are modeled SDS. So let's disable the materials and maybe enable the wireframe and here you can see everything is nicely SDS modeled and some meshes maybe in this case here the classes um, for the top lights are not SDS modeled but 99% of the meshes are SDS modeled. And this SDS user data is just for um, enabling or disabling the SDS, the subdivision steps of the meshes. And um, for animating or working with the rig, I recommend to um, just put zero in this user data. This means no subdivision for your meshes and for rendering you should choose at least two or maybe even three subdivision steps. Okay, let's jump back to the raw shading and let's take a look at the second user data, which is called car paint track. So I enable the Corona viewport renderer in this case. And as you can see, I just render everything here in this case with a Corona physical sky with an intensity of 0.1. And we have predefined car paints for the truck, black, white, blue, blue metallic, silver, or you can also choose your custom car paint color here in this case, maybe yellow or some green color. And of course you can choose your own car paint custom metalness. And in this case, you only want to deal with the V slider here. So fully white, 100% white means it's fully metallic and 0% means uh, fully black, means it's completely non-metallic car paint, I think. That's very easy to handle. And as you can see, you can choose your car paint um, during your renderer is a rendering. So you can choose your different styles and different looks during um, your rendering. Okay, 
Um, let's take a look at the lights here and to see what's happening with the lights I should also um, enable the Corona viewport renderer again and you can just uh, put in a number to adjust the lights strength here we have um, lights for the truck and here you have the user data top light so I can put in maybe a number of 50 and you will see the lights strength gets adjusted and of course we have the mid lights the front lights and the turn signals are separated of course turn signal left and turn signal right and we have that also for the um, dump semi trailer here here you have the backlights outer intensity um, and the backlights, the red lights here and of course the turn signal left and turn signal right and of course you can choose all the user data just click at the first one and then hold shift click at the last one and then right click and reset to default so that's are the default light settings for rendering okay I think that's uh, very nice. Let's take a look at the Tipper Semi Trailer user data here and I disable my subdivision steps so everything is uh, nice and smoothly in the viewport. Okay, let's take a look at the Tipper Semi Trailer um, rig here and you can move the dump body up and down and in reality you always want to make sure your underwrite protection is up and in this case we have an underwrite protection user data slider here to move the underwrite protection up and down and if you move your um, dump body up you make sure the underwrite protection is at 100 percent in reality and here we have the slider um, to move the dump body up and down and as you can see the hydraulics cylinders follow automatically and of course the flap opens and closes automatically and if you don't like um, how the flap opens and closes you have a flap overshoot user data so you can animate the flap as you like with this flap overshoot user data okay then we have the extension supports and in reality the extension supports are down if you move the dump body up and if you drive the extension supports are up and you can do that with this user data slider here And then we have the front tires. So if you uh, if your dump body isn't loaded 100%, uh, and you maybe just uh, loaded 30% or 40%, you um, want to drive only with two axes uh, in reality. And for that, we have a front tires down and up user data slider, so you can. Uh, move the front axle of your dump semi trailer up and down and of course if the front tires down and up user data is at least at one percent the tires don't rotate automatically anymore okay that's it for the tipper semi trailer let's take a look at the drive controls for the whole truck Okay, now we want to take a look at the drive controls of our truck and to drive our um, truck along a spline, we just need a spline, so let's create one. I simply jump into the top view, create a rectangle spline and let's make it uh, bigger, maybe something like this, give it a nice rounding, maybe 1000 centimeters. And then I simply um, convert the spline and then I make sure it isn't closed and maybe I delete some points here and that's it. Now we are ready 
to drive our um, truck along the spline. So we make sure we put our spline into the um, field here. But as you can see here, it is called spline uniform. What does this mean? So let's take a look at our spline here and in the object properties settings, we make sure the intermediate points settings is set to uniform. And that's it. Now we are ready to drag and drop our spline into the splines field. And as you can see, our whole truck rig snaps to the spline and it looks a little bit shitty like that. And in this case, you have to deal with the swing out angle truck and swing out angle trailer. And if I move this maybe into the negative direction of maybe minus 15, you will see it looks plausible. And now um, you may say, um, I want to drive in the opposite direction. So that's also possible. Simply choose your spline, make sure you are in the points mode and with command A, you choose all your points, then right click, choose point order, reverse sequence, and now you drive in the opposite direction. That's it. Okay, um, let's take a look at the position um, user data slider here. With this, you are able to drive the whole truck rig along the spline. So you want to animate the position slider. So let's do that. I simply create a keyframe at zero, at frame zero. Just hit the button and then maybe I move it to 300 move the slider a little bit, maybe we drive through this curve here and create another keyframe. And as you can see, the whole rig drives um, through the curve here and the tires rotate automatically, but it doesn't look plausible. And for that, we have some extra user data which is called swing out angle truck. So if we drive into a curve, the truck swings out a little bit and you can simply move the slider to make it look plausible. And of course you can animate this and you may have to animate this um, to make it plausible. So you simply adjust this a little bit. And as you can see, um, we have this control objects so you can see what happens and you don't have to click this control objects. They just um, show you what happens um, with your rig um, to just um, to adjust the swing out angles of your truck and tipper semi trailer. And now it looks a little bit more plausible for me. And let's take a look at the other controls, which are called control multiplier, maximum front wheel angle and control correction. And as you can see, if we drive into a curve, the front wheels turn in a little bit. And to make it more plausible, you may have to deal with the control contraction correction uh, slider first. So if you move this up or down, you may see um, that your front wheels turn in. And to multiply this um, turn in of your front wheels, we have the control multiplier and we can move this up. And as you can see, if I move it or crank it up, maybe more than five, nothing happens anymore. And then the maximum front wheel angle user data comes in. This defines how much your front wheels can turn in. And in this case, 40 degrees. And if you crank it up, you will see it turns in more to maximum 85 degrees in this case. And that's it for turning in the uh, wheels into a curve. And of course, this is not a completely physical based uh, truck rig. Um, it is made for animators so you can deal with all the um, user data to make a plausible 
animation. And then we have another user data, which is called tire rotation on off. As you can see, if we drive, the tires rotate automatically. And if we um, disable that, you will see the tires uh, rotate anymore. And we can reset the tire rotation. So if we enable this um, tire rotation again, with the reset tires user data, we simply reset the tires back to their origin or to their default um, rotation position. And that's it. But we want to reset the rig. If we drive along a spline and we want to reset the rig, we simply make sure we um, unlock the layer and unhide the layers. And then we have a selection object with, which is called reset with PSR unlock layers. And we select this object, restore the selection, and we make sure to reset the transform. But you will see nothing happens. And that's because you have keyframes here at this user data. So we want to make sure we don't have any keyframes anymore. Just um, select them with command shift and click the button. And then we make sure we clear the spline field here. And now we are able to reset our rig to the default position. And maybe you want to make sure your tires rotation is also resetted back to its default um, state. And that's the whole drug trick for Cinema 4D. Thanks for watching this video. See you soon and goodbye.